I'd like to present my new idea for Wicked Advertising. It's based on an idea which, in my humble opinion, is brilliant. Sounds promising. Proceed, then. What the heck is that? That is a picture of Mount Vesuvius in eruption. It gives you an idea of the impact our new advertising policy is going to have. Now, JP, an example of the type of national publicity you can expect. <laughs> oh, God. The Time Magazine. Usually, and finally, JB, golfer of the year. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Now, here is a map of the potential wicked markets divided into social, geographic, and ethnic groups. It shows how we have made deep penetration and overwhelming saturation in areas where resistance has long been hickiest. <laughs> Finch, I think you've done it. Very good. Thank you. Am I right, man? Say, bud, what is his idea? Or say, JP, what is his idea? You heard. A TV show that will give us penetration and peak reaction. But what is his idea? I don't see why you have to be so darn negative. The only things you ever come up with are lousy ideas like treasure hunts. <laughs> so, Finch, what is the idea? I don't think I'm going to tell you. What do you mean? Well, JV, I've always thought of you as a man of breath and vision, but I just don't know anymore. I'm thrown. By what? By the way, you spoke to Bud about his idea for a treasure hunt. You see, Bud, you see, Mr. Bigley, there are treasure hunts, and there are treasure hunts. Now, when Bud brought me the idea, I thought it was a lousy one, too. I should hope so. But then I thought, the idea in itself is nothing. It's the development that counts. Leonardo da Vinci once drew sketches for a flying machine, but it took American know-how to turn them into the Boeing 707. A man named Gatlin once invented a small, simple machine gun, but it took a mighty brain to turn that simple, little machine gun into a great program like the Untouchables. <laughs> and when I remembered that, Bud's idea became a challenge to me. I thought to myself, I'm going to take this idea of Bud Frumps and defrump it. <laughs> First of all, my treasure is not bonds, and it's not money. It's stock. Stock! 50,000 shares of stock. Stock in our company? How are we supposed to issue 50,000 shares of stock? It's a simple matter of taking the convertible debentures from the sinking fund, issuing stock options, which are then exchangeable for rights, which we then replace with warrants. Run that by me again. I can't. <laughs> it can't be done. But what if it could, JB? Wouldn't it create a tremendous excitement? But it can't be done. But what if it could? But it can't. But what if it could, JB? Just say for a moment it can be done. What's your answer? I forgot the question. You can't give away <laughs> stock! Give away stock dividends, don't we? Please, let me continue with my presentation. Finch, I hate giveaway shows. So do I, JB, but the public loves them. I tell you, anyone who can come up with a new, unfixed, unrigged way to give away something for nothing is going to clean up. And gentlemen, I've got that new twist. I'd like to present to you the Worldwide Wicked Treasure Girl. Uh, what is this? This, JD, is a secret ingredient. <laughs> the country much more. You see, I'm combining greed and sex. Can't miss. Take it away, Penny. Hello there. I'm the Worldwide Wicked Treasure Girl. Each week, I'll be giving you a clue to where the worldwide treasure has been stacked. Hmm, very. Very, yeah. Sorry, this eye patch gets me mixed up. <laughs> Don't you just love my outfit? Yeah! yeah. Very nice, Miss LaRue. Very nice. Of course, Miss LaRue is only helping me demonstrate the idea. When we go on air, we need a big name celebrity. Obviously. Offhand, I'd say this role would be great for someone like, say, Elizabeth Taylor. This is an American program. Now, JP, the worldwide biggest treasure girl plus 50,000 shares of stock will just. JP, tell this man up and let us get on with our business. Just a moment. Gentlemen, and Miss LaRue, will you please leave me alone with Mr. Finch? Take care of him. This is crazy. What about the SEC? What about the stockholders? What about the FCC? What about the federal statute? This is madness. <laughs> Finch, I'm afraid you've let us down. I don't understand. Uh, you've missed the boat. You haven't thought this out properly. I don't understand, sir. Tell me, why does this treasure girl have to be a big-name personality? 
Sir, how would it be if she were someone more, more, more identified with the company? A real, uh, a real worldwide wicket grabber? Yes, maybe. Say, why not use Miss LaRue herself? JP, that's brilliant! What a great thought! It wasn't bad, was it? So it's all settled then. Uh, just a moment. Where are you going to hide the treasure? Now, JB, the show is completely unrigged. Not even the treasure girl will know the treasure is. Well, I'd like to know. Okay, JB, but it's got to be a secret between you and me. I'll give you the first clue the treasure girl is going to give the country. West of the sun, west of the moon. Where is the treasure? Blow me a two. What the heck is that? Great clue, isn't it? But if you'll take note, the first letters of each line are W, W, W. Going to use our buildings? I'm going to hide 5,000 shares of stock in each of the 10 nationwide buildings. But you'll have mobs of people running all over the place looking for the treasure. JB, if a man as brilliant and as educated as yourself couldn't guess from the clue I gave you, do you really think the American public will? Good point. <clears throat> Good. Gentlemen, you can come in now. Gentlemen, I'm thinking of going ahead with the worldwide wicked treasure hunt. Of course, I want your approval. Well, JB, I think it's an absolutely crazy notion. We saw. Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> you like it? 